All right, so this is gonna be our second video on Google Data Studio and Google Sheets. And we have some data in Google Sheets, which is what we're using to create reports in our Google Data Studio, which we'll be able to share later on with other people. Great for presentation. Also, it's great because it hides the original data too, right? So let's be honest. So now I'm gonna go back to my uh, table and what we ended on last time we wanted something that will convert to a date that our Google Data Studio understands so currently the problem we have is that our Google Data Studio doesn't understand the date format that our Google Sheets has so uh, first of all let's see what I'm talking about so I'm gonna click on this uh, data source that I have which is our uh, Google Sheets data source so I'm gonna click this edit data source and here is our date that we have from our Google Sheets and if I go here to see what date and times uh, formats data studio accepts I'm gonna see all of these different formats so you can see the, you have the date which is YYYMMDD format that's gonna be our full date format now we have the date with the hour format if we wanted that there's the hour after that and then we have like year and month format and so on so now we will have to create a new column in our Google Sheets that is in a correct format so I'm gonna create one for this date which is gonna be the full date format and I'm going to do another one for this year and month format so first of all I'm going to go back to my Google Sheets and I'm going to call this GDS for Google Data Studio date and I'll do this GDS uh, date month Month. Okay, so now let's expand this. We want this to be in a correct format. So, so far I have all the formatting. So I'll go ahead and use text function, which is going to be the easiest way for me to get this done. So I'm going to click on the value, which is going to be the date. That currently is in our Google Sheets I'm gonna use comma and then I'm gonna provide formatting in quotes so we said we need y y y y m m d d that was the full date format that it accepts so I'll close my quotes close my parentheses that should create that format date that Google Data Studio accepts I'll double click to send this down now, I also want this one so text Click on the date, quote, we have YYYYMM, we don't want the day. Close that, double click, send this down. Now I'm going to do control arrow key down to make sure that this worked all the way. It did. So now we made those two columns, which we'll be able to use as a valid date in our data studio so I'm gonna go back to my data studio and I have to refresh fields this may take a little bit and you can see how it recognized there are just new fields in our data so we'll go ahead and hit apply and now we have those new fields so you can see how it automatically recognized YYYYMMDD as the format of this for whatever reason it didn't recognize this one which is going to be our YYYYMM format we'll change that let's make sure we didn't make a mistake here YMM seems to be accurate so we should be fine on that so 
that's that. So we have our new date field and new date year month type of field. So I'm going to click done. So now we have the new field. The reason we may want to have this new field is first of all because we may want to give people the option to filter our reports by date. So I'm going to move this a little lower. So actually let's move this a little further down. I'm going to pull this region above this map. Put this map here and over here I want to have that filter option for them for date. So that's going to be this date range. So I'll click on this. I'll select this the area for that. And uh, do we want the default date range? So if we want to have a default rate date range, which is going to be selected as let's say the last 30 days, we can go ahead and do that. We can also include today or not include today. I guess we'll do include today, apply. So that's going to be our default range. We can obviously now go ahead and go under style and change the size of our font whatever we decide it's going to be I guess I went a little too far with a 30 size so that's our data range it should be fine so let's see what this looks like and how it works so I'm gonna go under view and that's our data range so I want to do the last 30 days and we can see how it doesn't really do anything so it didn't really uh, filter our numbers at all so I'm gonna go ahead and click edit and now we'll have to see why this particular filter doesn't really work first of all I'm gonna click here so you can see that this is the field that I've selected which is sales which is the 5 million number that we have but this is not being filtered the reason it's not being filtered is because this date range dimension is not selected so I'm gonna pick a dimension and I'm gonna pick my that GDS date and because it's a valid date now it gets it and it says no data so no data because we don't have any data within the last 30 days. So probably that was a, a good idea to put as a default last 30 day option, especially if we didn't have any data for our last 30 days. So I guess we're going to do uh, last year. We could do that. Or in the end of the day, we could do fixed something. So I'm going to do fixed and it's going to be from January 1st through December 31st which is last year 2016 fixed as a default range now they'll be able to change it later on so I'm going to hit apply and now because we've assigned this to that particular date range now it's being filtered by this date range uh, this one is not because date range dimension is not selected so I'm gonna go ahead and pick the same dimension so basically the idea is they can pick and choose which one of your different reports on a page is being affected by this particular date range that we're actually selecting on top so there we are so now if I go under view we have this 2.4 million we have all these numbers so I can go ahead and change the date range so I can go from I don't know July 1st 2015 through December 31st hit apply and that should give us the new total perfect so now that I have this, I don't really probably need this year filter at all. So I'm going to hit edit here 
and uh, we may want to just get rid of this so with the same logic this if we want this map to be filtered by this range of dates we've picked we probably want to make sure that our date dimension is selected beautiful so so far so good now let's see what other things we can do so in addition to just getting the total of sales we may want to see what's our average sale within that same period right right here now usually when we work with pivot tables we can just go here and switch our metric uh, calculation to be different than what we have currently but uh, we're going to find out that it's not a possibility here so what we'll have to do we'll have to actually go ahead and change our data source a little bit so edit data source and right now we have our dates months etc etc now we have our sales now I also want to have the average sale instead of just the sum of sales so the current function is the sum of sales but I don't want to lose the sum functionality I want to also have the average functionality so what I'm going to do I'm going to click on this little three dots next to sales and I'm going to duplicate that field and I'm going to click here and rename and call this AVG for average and it's gonna be currency and the aggregation is not going to be sum anymore it's going to be average so we have now our average new metric so I'm going to click done so I'm going to copy this paste this and move this below and this is our sales we don't want it to be sales this should be the average so I'm gonna switch the metric from sales to average switch back and there we have it that's our average sale two hundred and forty nine dollars and thirty cents that we have and again you can go ahead and do your stylings and decide what your decimal precision is going to be so because it's currency I guess we'll do two that's our sales that's our average now let's start using this other date month field so we were able to use this GDS date fields to do this great filtering functionality for our dates on top now the next things we may want to do is start using this and I'll show you where this might be useful so I want to create some sort of line chart that's going to show our sales over time. So let's start with our line chart. So I'm going to do this time series, which looks like a line. So I click there and I'm going to put it right here. So you can see that's the dimension that's being filtered by we have this new dimension which is the dimension we're using as our date dimension and we also want the metric to be our sales over time so I'm going to hit sales and go back and what I'm going to find out is uh, the current dimension that I have selected is that date dimension and that's all the individual dates so what I have on a grab is that on this particular date if there was a high ten thousand dollar sale the chart jumps up and then on the next day if we had less sales it will jump down so for example right here on this particular date we didn't have any sales so it jumps down to zero all of a sudden so it's not a very good representation on where our sales are going whether they're increasing overall or decreasing or what's happening with them so this is where this very detailed date dimension may not be very useful so I'm gonna go and switch this time dimension to that date month dimension now the reason I don't want to do just month let me first do that month because we already had the month dimension before so if I just do month it's just going to put January 
and it's gonna sum up all January for all years we have. So if we have January sales in 2015, 2016, 2017, it's just gonna sum up and show it as a January altogether. And then February and so on. Now in this particular case, it's not really a big deal because we're just filtering to this one year. So it's not going to pick all these other years anyways. But if somebody selects a longer period than a year here, that's going to be a concern. So this is where this date month dimension is a good idea. So I'm going to pick that. And now it's going to be easy from January 2016 through December 2016. We have our sales report. Let's go ahead and view this as a result. So that's our sales report over time. But we should be able now to go ahead and pick a different range. So if we do from January 1st, 2015 to December 31st, 2017, takes a little bit. See January 1st, in January in the beginning, our sales were lacking a little bit. Then as we started with our sales, this is our line. So 2015, this is about where 2016 is gonna start and so on. So we have this nice line chart for our sales. We can actually look at, so we can change this line chart to something different. So currently it's a line chart. We can switch this to a bar chart. So it's going to show this columns and our sales over time. Now with column chart, there's going to be a limit to how many bars you have. And to show like the last 12 months, we probably want to have 12 bars. And again, a lot of times when you do this, you probably want to have some sort of label on up so twelve months. Click our view button and that's our sales and because our seeds from January first to December thirty first that's the full year but if we go for Let's say January and February too in our time series. So now we have two more months in 2017 in addition to 2016. So if we look right here, we see, see the February is low. And then we have our uh, sales numbers going forward so now as I'm looking at this I can see that see that that thing is kind of overpowering what I see that's not a very pleasant experience so what we can do we can go back and edit and we should be able to just send this back in order so I'm gonna send to back and now if I check this, that problem should not occur anymore. So now it just hovers over it. Anyways, that's it for this video. I'll see you next time.